and Sarah. We are so happy to have time with you. And I want to encourage you. We have an amazing interview with Robert Henderson. He wrote a book called Operating in the Courts of Heaven. And it's really a thought-provoking, insightful interview um, with his book and also what he brings out from the Bible. And, you know, I just want to encourage you that God answers prayer as well. And so you might have a need in your life, you know, some financial needs, some physical needs, um, emotional, some maybe some family issues. We would love to pray for you. So hop on the phone, get on the website. And mom, you have a testimony of somebody who did that. And well, we pray the, for them. Victoria is something. She called in for prayer over her marriage. And her husband has made a great effort to spend more time with her and started praying with her. That's awesome. I love that. Mm -hmm. And you know, mom, I know there are people who are watching now that have marital struggles. They're struggling. Maybe you want to get married. Maybe you're in a difficult marriage. Maybe you're struggling just because the financial pressure on your marriage is, is causing some tension and, so, you know, it's difficult. Maybe you're just struggling internally. Maybe you have some heart issues that are, that are difficult for you. Um, just soul and mental, emotional issues, maybe some trauma from the past. We would love to pray for you. We know that God answers prayer. So hop on the phone, get on the website. And lastly, and most importantly, maybe, I want to thank our partners. Thank you, partners, for helping us to cover the earth with the word. We couldn't do what we do without our partners. And some of you have been with us for 20, 30 years. Some of you are recently partners in the last five to 10 years. But thank you so much for praying for us as well as helping us financial. We deeply appreciate you. Now, I want you to turn your attention in just a couple seconds here. We're joining this interview with Robert Henderson. It will very much encourage your faith that God has some amazing things available for you. Sarah Bowling, Living Genuine Love, is on a mission to connect every one with the heart of God. With a passion for the Bible and the gift of teaching, Sarah brings a new perspective to articulate God's life-giving revelation to our modern moment. God's heart relentlessly reaches all our hidden places and changes us from the inside out. And Living Genuine Love is equipping people with resources and tools that empower them to walk in this intimate relationship with God. Sarah is a powerful scholar and spirit-led teacher with a gift and passion that takes her many places around the world to bring lasting change to each of us who are craving the transformative love of God. At Living Genuine Love, we're committed to seeing you walk in a vibrant relationship with God every day. Learn more about Sarah Bowling and her ministry, Living Genuine Love, by visiting sarahbowling.org or call us at 800-627-1995. Thank you so much for joining today with Marilyn and Sarah. We're delighted to get some time with you and have a really cool guest I want to introduce to you. He's really a fun friend as well. His name is Robert Henderson. Thank you, Robert. Thanks, Sarah. Good totally to be with you. Totally happy to have you here. Yes. And you have a cool book called Operating in the Courts of Heaven. But before we get into that, because I think it's going to be very powerful for our audience, Tell us a little bit about your background so we kind of have some familiarity with you. Yeah, well, I've been in the ministry as far as ministry for, gosh, I was going to, I, I was pa a pastor for 22 years. So 37 years, 37, 38 years I've been in ministry now. Wow. And so I've been traveling and doing that for about 15 years. But of course, when COVID hit, all the travel came to a, a screeching sure. halt. Sure. So what happened was we began to do a lot of media. Mm. Uh, online stuff, but TV stuff and all that. So we have actually shifted more into a media style ministries, travel a little bit here and there, but mo mostly just trying to reach the multitudes through this venue. Sure. And so, so anyway, that's what we're doing right now. And my wife and I've been married, we'll be married 45 years this year. Wow. And so we got married really young. We were five years old. No, <laughs> no, really we were 18. We were seriously, we were 18 years old when we got married and we have six children. And we have uh, all biological, all ours. And then we have uh, presently eight grandchildren. Oof. So we have a lot of activity in our in our home yep. and in our family. But here's the, here's the wonderful thing. All, all, five of my six children are all in full-time ministry, Oof. except for my oldest son who is in the business world and does really well. So yeah. we're really, really a blessed family. And we appreciate the goodness of God. Yeah. 
And I, and I know some of your testimony, like back in the day when you were first starting into the ministry stuff, you're like poor as a church mouse. <laughs> For sure. Right. Remember, and I remember reading that in some of your books and share a little bit about that kind of that experience, what that looked like and how God kind of turned that for you. Well, the, the, uh, we were, we were, especially when you have so many kids. Yeah. I mean, people would walk up and say, don't you know what causes that or whatever? Right, I mean, right. and, and because they were actually, they saw us struggling. Yeah. But I also knew God, God was, you know, uh, was leading us. Mm -hmm. He was, I mean, we were, we were under his, his care. And so we really fought through all of that. But the bottom line is we didn't have a whole lot. It was hard. And your mom. <laughs> right? Because your mom had some kind of my cranky mom, things to say. My mom and dad came to visit us one day. Yeah. And when they visited us, what happened was, it, it just so happened to all, you know, coincide together. They came and turned off our water, mm -hmm. our gas, and our electricity. And my, I mean... I, I mean, it was just, it was like a horrendous thing. But now, the reason they turned it off was not because I was being unfaithful. It was because I had taken the money to pay that with because I didn't have enough and paid my tithe instead. Yeah. And and so when I did that, though, my mom looked at me and she said, she said, I think y'all need to just pack up and come home because mm -hmm. we were living away and preparing for ministry and all that kind of stuff. And I remember I looked at my mom and I think it was the Lord that probably gave me the answer. Mm -hmm. And I said, well, mom, I said, didn't you and my dad, didn't daddy and you have a hard time too? And she said, well, yeah. And I said, then why would you cheat me out of that? Right. Because I knew in the midst of it, God was using it. I'm not saying it was God. Sure. I'm saying, but he sure. was using it to prepare us. But the real breakthrough from all of that came when I discovered the court of heaven. Mm -hmm. That's when it, that's when the breakthrough happened. And you might be watching right now and maybe you're struggling financially. <laughs> maybe they've just turned off <laughs> all of the stuff for you as well, or you're struggling and you're like in the midst of foreclosure. We want to ask you, hop on the phone, get on the website. We want to pray for you because God has a breakthrough. God absolutely has solutions and provisions and answers God can absolutely help. So hop on the phone, get on the website, and of course, grab your copy of Courts of Heaven. Super, super helpful. Operating in the Courts of Heaven, what that means, you're like, what? I don't, I don't understand exactly. And so with those questions in mind as well, Robert, what are the Courts of Heaven? What does that mean? Well, the Court of Heaven, see, when, when um, I believe that when we pray or we worship or whatever we do spiritually, we sometimes, many times, hopefully, we, we feel the presence of God. And we use the term, we feel the presence of God come. Yes. And, and that's, that's right. I mean, it's sure. true. But I actually believe a better way of phrasing that was we stepped into a dimension where he is. Right. Because Jesus promised us that where he was or where he is, there we can be also. And when you read the Bible, it's like he talks about entering into the holiest of holies. Mm -hmm. It's not like the holiest of holies comes to us. It's like we step into that dimension. So, so the truth of the matter is we live in a natural world. But there is an unseen realm that we all believe in. If we wouldn't even be sitting here, we didn't believe in that. Sure. That we that when we pray, I believe we we can we can by faith step into those realms. And I believe the court of heaven is one of many different realms that you find in scripture. Uh, when I first started teaching the court of heaven, which has been, you know, 11, 12 years now. Yeah. When I first started teaching it, people thought I was teaching a method of praying. Hmm. But I, and the Lord, I, I was actually teaching somewhere and I heard this come out of my mouth. Hmm. I mean, it kind of like bypassed my mind and I heard this come out of my mouth. The court of heaven is not a method of praying. It's a dimension of the spirit. And whenever I said that, that was like a major key that began to unlock a new understanding. Like I was doing it in a pretty major setting. And the, the leader, the apostolic leader of that work came to me later. He said, Robert, what you said, I've heard you teach it so much, but what you said today about the court of heaven being a dimension of the spirit, he said, that makes me, that one thing makes me understand this, that when we pray, we by faith, by, it's all by faith, we are stepping into a realm that Daniel saw in Daniel 7, 9, and 10. Here's what he said, I watched, in other words, he's, he's operating as a seer, I watched until thrones were set into place, the Ancient of Days was seated, all this, 
angelic activity is going on. And it says the court was seated and the books were open. And Daniel was seeing into the unseen realm, this dimension. Well, we have a right to step into that dimension because Jesus actually talked about it in the New Testament. Yeah. And, and I was reading, and that's ab absolutely some of the things you unpack and discuss and talk in this uh, really cool operating in the courts of heaven. Grab your copy because it will help you. What Robert's talking about here, you might be saying, well, I don't totally understand that. And nor could you because this is such a robust, amazing revelation. And this book will help unpack that for you, not only for your understanding, but also application. And so, Robert, when you think about this, how did you see, like for your mom telling you, hey, you know, you need to pack it up and move home. Mm -hmm. And you said, really what happened is this revelation changed the game for you. It, it, it did because we, 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 you know, as we got, as, as the kids got older and we, you know, did more ministry and planted a church and all that, you know, things kind of loosened up a little bit, but we still, there was always some kind of restriction that was there. Well, what really broke it open was when I discovered that there was a spirit of poverty mm. that was claiming a legal right against me. Uh, and and this is quite amazing. I was in Zimbabwe and I was standing before 5,000 people and the pastor there had asked me, would you please teach something that could help us break something open in our economy, even for a nation uh, concerning the court of heaven? And I said, well, yeah. And so I just, out of lack of anything else, I, I went to Proverbs chapter six, where the scripture says, uh, you know, don't be lazy and all this kind of stuff. And it said, because he says, if you are, he says, so it says this, your poverty will come up on you like an armed man. Mm. And when I read it, I'd never seen, I was, I'm sending before 5,000 people. The word your jumped off the page at me. Mm. And I suddenly realized that there was an assignment of poverty. He didn't say poverty will come. He said, your poverty will come. Mm. In other words, poverty was laying a claim to people's lives. And in that situation to a whole nation was laying a claim saying, I own you. I'm going to determine your future and destiny, not God. You belong to me. Well, see, that I realized I had that in my life because of the way I thought, because of the way I acted, because of the way I did some things. But I also had there because of some issues in my bloodline oh. and my generational issues that my, my family before me had been party to the wow. poverty spirit that gave that thing a legal right to claim me. And I'm telling you, when we dealt with that and got a judgment from the court of heaven against that thing, everything broke open. Yeah. And you might be watching right now. Maybe that's, you see that you're like, it's generational. I look at my mom, dad, I look at my grandmom, grad dad, I, and you look at, you're like, Oh my goodness. That's, that's what's happening here. Hop on the phone, get on the website. We want to pray with and for you and really break that and see you walk into victory and success and what the devil meant for evil, God turns and uses for good. So hop on the phone, get on the website. We want to pray for you and see God really give you a breakthrough. Additionally, grab your copy of Operating in the Courts of Heaven. And I love this because when you read it, it will start to settle into your heart, into your soul and adjust your mindset so you can really see the success that God has for you starting today. Together, we are impacting thousands of lives with the truth, compassion and power of God's word. But there is still much more to be done. By becoming a partner with Marilyn Hickey Ministries, you'll share in bringing God's miracles and healing to the sick experiencing a deep love for the Bible and taking the gospel to the nations. When you become a $30 a month partner with Marilyn and Sarah, we'll send you our welcome gift package, which includes the Jehovah Rapha oil vial with oil prayed over by Marilyn and Sarah, our exclusive partner CD set, which includes six CDs featuring 12 never before released teachings, the Majesty coffee table book featuring beautiful representations of the names of God, and more. If you have a passion to reach the lost and are ready to release the anointing of God into your life, then join us today by becoming a partner. Call or click today and help Marilyn and Sarah cover the earth with the word. Break through the roadblocks and spiritual legalities that stand in the way of your answered prayer. 
For your gift of $29 or more, we will send you Operating in the Courts of Heaven by Robert Henderson. This bestseller has supernaturally transformed lives all over the world. Through fresh biblical insights and a systematic framework, you will learn how to come before the courts of heaven and present your case for unanswered prayers or delayed breakthroughs to the righteous judge and see miraculous results. We will also send you Marilyn's foundational book, Breaking Generational Curses, Sarah's Transformed for Triumph booklet, and our Spiritual Authority Scripture card. And for your gift of $69 or more, we will send you the Crown of Thorns lithograph signed by renowned artist Alan Boltz. This stunning piece of artwork is a vivid reminder of the hope we have in Jesus Christ and the sacrifice he made for us all. Present your case before the courts of heaven and receive breakthrough. Call or click today. Welcome back to Today with Marilyn and Sarah. We're continuing our interview with Robert Henderson. Robert, you have this cool book, Operating in the Courts of Heaven. Mm -hmm. Now, you talked in the, like the last little segment there, you talked about how this is not a prayer method. Right. It's rather a dimension. So, and when you see that shift, how does that make a difference? Why is that important? Well, I think because other, because if you think it's a method of prayer, you think, well, if I do one, two, three, then I'm going to get, you know, whatever, four or five. Right. But, but, and, it, and we try to reduce it down to a formula. Mm. Well, I've been in this long enough to know that, that formulas normally don't work, that, that it's out of a relationship with the Lord and under the leadership of the Holy Spirit that, that really brings results. Now, there are principles we can learn that we need to apply. But, uh, but for instance, uh, the, it, James, uh, or excuse me, the, the Bible speaks in Hebrews chapter 5 about, about uh, that, that um, through maturity, as we come into maturity, that we literally develop spiritual senses. And that's not talking about our five natural senses. That's talking about our prophetic senses. So we, we, grow, we grow in ability to sense what's happening in the unseen world. For instance, I was really around a lot of high-level you know, prophetic people that they were the real deal. I mean, they could tell you exactly what was going on and what was you know in the spirit realm and all that. I can't do that. That's not me, mm. because because they would see and hear and all this, and I do hear some, but the main thing I do is I feel, and so what I try to do whenever I step into the court of heaven, which is by faith, I say, God, I'm coming into this dimension called the court of heaven. I'm stepping into this realm, and I'm trying to be sensitive to the leadership of the Holy Spirit, because Romans eight twenty six says, when we don't know how to pray as we ought, the Holy Spirit helps us in our weakness. Mm -hmm. And so I say, okay, I'm going to be sensitive. And some of the greatest breakthroughs I've had in the Holy Spirit is because I heard the Lord whisper something to me mm -hmm. and say, do this and say this and, and, and literally ask me for this. And when I would do that, there has been like unbelievable breakthrough that's come. But it was all because the Holy Spirit actually showed me, not because I was following a formula. Mm -hmm. And that's super important. And, and one of the things I love in this book that you really work through, and along that line, Revelation, you talk about uh, God as our father, our friend, yes. and our judge. Mm -hmm. and, and on page 27 in here, you start to talk through uh, as it relates to the father, seeing, mm -hmm. and, and, and how do you, how does that relate to the courts of heaven? Yep. as seeing God as our father. I mean, we hear it and we know Romans 8, 16, 14, you know, yep. bears witness with our spirit that we're God's children, God's, mm -hmm. you know, an Abba father, Christ. Mm -hmm. So what does that mean in the courts of heaven for us? Well, when, when the disciples came to Jesus in Luke 11 and they said, teach us to pray. What Jesus said in Luke 11, when you pray, say our father, which art in heaven. So he basically said, the first thing you're going to have to know by revelation is that God is your father. And then you're going to pray out of that revelation, which is what Romans 8, 15 talks about, where he says that the spirit of adoption creates a cry mm. from a revelation of Abba, Father. You're my father. Therefore, I have a right to come to you as my father. So that was the first basis of prayer. But then Jesus continues in Luke 11, and he talks about in verses 5 through 8, he talks about approaching God as friend. See, he transitions. He said, okay, now you, you can approach God as a father, but you can also come before him as friend because he talked about a friend who has a friend come to his own his journey. He can't help him. He gets up and goes to another friend, which is clearly the Lord, which is clearly God. And, and, 
ask him, petitions him for something for this other friend. Yeah. And so that was approaching God as friend. And and by the way, when you approach God as father, it's usually about your own stuff. It's about your own needs, your own wants, your own issues. When you approach him as friend from that parable that Jesus told, it's really about the needs of another. Hmm. It's because he, he was standing in between two friends, the one who had a need and the one who could meet it. And so his job in that thing was to secure from the one that had for the one to the one that, that needed it yeah. so he could get to his journey or, or finish his journey. Okay, so those were the two things. But then in Luke 18, Jesus picks the parable or, or the principle back up again and starts talking about praying prayers. He said, he said, he literally says that I that we should always pray and not lose heart or be uh, faint or weary. It actually means to turn coward. Hmm. That's what the word actually means there. So what he's saying, but then he begins to talk about a widow coming before an unjust judge. Yeah. See, this is where what Daniel saw when he saw this court system. Jesus says, okay, you can approach God as father. You can approach him as friend, but you can also approach him as judge. And so when you approach him as father, just quickly, when you approach him, it's about your needs. When you approach him as friend, it's about the needs of somebody else. When you approach him as judge, it's about dealing with the adversary that is resisting what God wants to do in your life. Mm -hmm. Man, I want you to hop on the phone, get on the website, grab your copy of Operating in the Courts of Heaven. Now, some of you watching, you're like, I already have that book. Actually, you don't have this one. Mm -hmm. This one is new and Robert's added new stuff to it and things that I'm like, ah, as I was reading, I was like, ooh, that wasn't in the other ones. This was, so I encourage you grab, get a couple copies because you can pass them to your friends and do it in a Bible study, a book club, you know, Sunday school class, super, super helpful. Now, Robert, when you talk about uh, the judge thing, mm -hmm. and you know, and it's the adversary, the accuser of the brethren, yes. right? So what does that look like when, when we may not see, be aware actually that the enemy, the Satan is accusing? What does that, that look right. like? See, in that parable in Luke 18, the widow comes before the judge of, and says, avenge me or get justice for me from my adversary. That is the Greek word antidikos. Mm. And it literally means one who brings a lawsuit. That's what the word means. So the widow was saying, I have got a legal opponent against me that I need a judgment against to stop. And so, but the, but the word antidikos comes from two words, anti, which means against or instead of, and dikos, which means rights. So the purpose of the adversary is to deny you what's rightfully yours. Mm. See, this, this was like an amazing revelation for me because we know that when Jesus died on the cross, everything that pertains to life and godliness, we've already been given. But why aren't we living it out? Mm. Because the enemy has a case against us. See, and Peter used the same word in 1 Peter 5, 8, be sober, be vigilant for your adversary, Antidikos. He walks about as a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. So he can only devour your life. He can only devour your destiny. He can only devour your purpose, your finances, your children. He can only devour anything if he finds a legal right to do it from. See, if he could just do it just because he wants to do it, we'd all be dead. Right. But he can't. He has to discover a legal right and bring a case. So what I had to do to get my some of my breakthroughs, I had to go into the courts, repent for whatever he was claiming he had a legal right to do it from, ask for the blood of Jesus to speak, and saw and, and see that thing be annulled. And that's when massive breakthroughs started happening in our life. So the accuser, the enemy, the adversary, and it has a legal right. So mm -hmm. what gives the enemy that legal right? You know, I had to wrestle through some of this because, uh, first of all, um, I believe that when Jesus died on the cross, he stripped the devil. Yeah. But that doesn't stop him from trying to op still operate in those realms. And um, and he, he, he tries to use legal rights against us based on my sin the sin in my bloodline, different issues where he comes and he says, hey, I have a case here against this person. Mm -hmm. And 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 he begins to present that as a reason why he could do something against me and prohibit me from having what God wants for me. Um, the, the thing that, here, here's what really gave me the answers to this. Two, two major things here. Number one, Peter, the apostle Peter, the man that walked with Jesus, yeah said, be sober, be vigilant, your adversary, 
your legal opponent. So he said, even though Jesus has stripped him, he's still seeking to operate as your legal opponent. And you better be on guard because if you're not, he will yeah. devour you. Yeah. And then, but Galatians 3.14 or 3.13, it says we have been, the Bible says there that we have been um, freed from the curse. Yep. Okay, so why do I have to deal with this? Well, the reason why is because in Revelation 22, the, the script, in verse 3, the scripture says there that you literally, we, there is no more curse. Mm -hmm. So anyway, in the other words, the thing is, we got we to gotta deal with the things in the courts of heaven. Mm -hmm. And that's such a powerful principle. And, and recognizing the enemy seeks to accuse, to condemn, to be the adverse adversary um, and, and, and the person, the prosecutor, right, right, come against us. So I just encourage you, hop on the phone, get on the website, grab your copy of Operating in the Courts of Heaven. The enemy tries to seek, devour, consume, deceive, and God has given us the right to have victory and overcome all the works of the enemy. Grab your copy today. Break through the roadblocks and spiritual legalities that stand in the way of your answered prayer. For your gift of $29 or more, we will send you Operating in the Courts of Heaven by Robert Henderson. This bestseller has supernaturally transformed lives all over the world. Through fresh biblical insights and a systematic framework, you will learn how to come before the courts of heaven and present your case for unanswered prayers or delayed breakthroughs to the righteous judge and see miraculous results. We will also send you Marilyn's foundational book, Breaking Generational Curses, Sarah's Transformed for Triumph booklet, and our Spiritual Authority scripture card. And for your gift of $69 or more, we will send you the Crown of Thorns lithograph signed by renowned artist Alan Boltz. This stunning piece of artwork is a vivid reminder of the hope we have in Jesus Christ and the sacrifice he made for us all. Present your case before the courts of heaven and receive breakthrough. Call or click today. I'm so glad you've watched this interview. Robert, would you pray for our audience, our viewers to have a tremendous breakthrough? Amen, amen. Well, Father, I want to pray. I want to even bring the audience, all the people watching around the world, into the courts of heaven. Lord, your word says that we can enter into those realms because of the blood of Jesus, that we have entrance into the holiest of holies. And you can just even feel that right now. And Lord, I just want to pray that as we come to stand before you, thank you so much for giving us audience before you. And we bring to you now in the courts the very cry and yearnings of our hearts, the deepest longings that we have. Come on, just tell him right now, what is the deepest longing of your heart? Because you're standing in the court of heaven. Just tell him that which is most pressing upon your life. And so we just come to do that, Lord. And we just want to ask in the name of Jesus that your blood would speak for us, silence any accusation the enemy would be bringing that would try to deny your right to move in our life. Let those accusations be annulled and removed right now and let the breakthrough we're asking you for occur in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I agree 100%. 100%. Yeah. And we disagree with the deceiver. Yes. And we agree with truth. Amen. And I really want to encourage you today, maybe the deceiver, the accuser, Satan, your opponent has been accusing and robbing and stealing from you and, and really lying. We want to encourage you, hop on the phone, get on the website. I want to pray with you that you can disagree with deception and agree with agree with truth. Grab your copy of, of Courts of Heaven. It will change your life.